Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095 Basic Algebra. Today we're going to look at section 6.3, which is slope intercept form. This is actually going to be split into two videos because it is a relatively long concept and you really need to know this one to progress in chapter 6. So the first thing we're going to look at is the equation y equals x minus 2. Now, we have it graphed here. And three of the points are plotted. And they're written as ordered pairs to label these particular points. Now, what we want to consider is what if we want to go from one ordered pair to another ordered pair, regardless of what that ordered pair is. We want to see a pattern. And so if we look at this first example, it says if we want to go from the point 0, negative 2, to the next point, negative 1, negative 3. So that's saying we want to go from this point here to this point here. What is our vertical change and our horizontal change? Well, if we look at the graph, the vertical change is I'm going to go down 1 or negative 1 in the uh, y direction. The horizontal change is I'm going to go negative 1 or left one spot to get to that point. So it's down 1 and to the left one. Now, I could write down one, left one. But when we're thinking about a graph, going down is in a negative direction. And going left or right is positive or negative, respectively, in the x. So to go from uh, this point, 0, negative 2, to this point, negative 1, negative 3, I have to go down 1, and I have to go back 1. So that is my vertical change, down 1. And my horizontal change is left 1. What if I wanted to go from the point negative 1, negative 3 to the point 2, 0? Well, if we look at our graph, negative 1, negative 3 is here. And I want to go to this point here. So let's look at our vertical change. I have to go up 1, 2, 3. And then to the right, 1, 2, 3. So we go up. 3, so it's positive. And we go to the right 3, which is positive. If we want to go from the point 2, 0 to the point 0, negative 2. Well, 2, 0 to the point 0, negative 2, I have to go down 2 and to the left 2. So down 2 is negative as a vertical change. And left 2 is negative as a horizontal change. Now, what we want to consider is maybe we see a pattern. If we see these values, they're equal, and they always have the same sign. They're both negative, they're both positive, they're both negative, and they have the same value from one point to the next. What we want to look at is the ratio of these values, the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change. And if we recall what ratios are, uh, it's essentially a comparison of one value to another. So if we look at the ratio from uh, our first example from one point to the next, we have negative 1 for every negative 1. And if we simplify that, well, negative 1 over negative 1 is 1. So we have a 1 to 1 ratio. If I do that from uh, these two points or ordered pairs that we had, we have 3 as my vertical change, and 3 as my horizontal change. Vertical over horizontal is my ratio. 3 over 3 reduces to 1. And finally, the last uh, change here, a vertical change to horizontal change, negative 2 over negative 2 also equals 1. So we're looking at the change in the vertical change, what we call the change in y, over the change in x, the horizontal change. And no matter what point we chose, if we went from this point to this point or you know, this point to that point, no matter what two points we chose, their ratio of change is going to be the same. Well, this pattern is something we call the slope of the line. The slope of a line is usually, or I should say always, denoted with m. That's what we use in algebra to denote slope. And if we think about it, it's rise over run. How far up or down we go, how far we rise or how far we go down, that's our rise. Left or right, well, that's our run. Are we running to the left or are we running to the right? So it's always rise over run. That's the ratio in which we compare. Now, if you think about it, if you'll notice I labeled this point 1 and this point 2 for each of these examples, 
To find this value, we find the difference in their y values. That's our vertical change, our change in y. Well, the difference in negative 3 and negative 2, difference means to subtract negative 3 minus a negative 2. Well, negative 3 minus a negative 2 would be negative 3 plus 2 would give me a negative 1. And that's the value we got from the graph. So we can find it mathematically as well. And to find the change in x, or our horizontal change, well, the change would be the difference between this value and that value. Well, negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. And we can see that's the value we got. Now, this would work for each of these points. Now, why I labeled these 2 and these 1 is kind of arbitrary, but we need it to be consistent because the order in which we do it does matter. So <clears throat> essentially, to find that horizontal change algebraically, I take the y value from a second point, and I find the difference between the y value of my first point, just like I did here. Negative 3 minus a negative 2 is a negative 1. The difference between those two values is 1. So the second y minus the first y gives me the change in y, which we found. We do the same thing with x. And notice that these values line up. If this was from the second point, this has to be from the second point. So negative 1 minus 0, because we're looking for a difference. That's why we subtract every time. And when we find that, we find the change in y over the change in x. That is the definition of slope. Essentially, this is a formula you're going to want to commit to memory. You want to have that uh, committed to memory. And it doesn't matter which one you choose as point 0.2 and point 0.1. And I'll show that right now. What if I called this point 0.2 and that point 0.1? Well, if we look at my y value in point 0.2, it's 0 minus the y value of point 1. 0 minus a negative 2. Minus a negative is positive. 0 plus 2 is 2. So I'd get the value 2. That would be my change in y. If I do the same thing with the x values, since I'm calling this my point 2, 2 minus the x value from 1, which is 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 over 2 is still 1. Now, just because I changed point 0.2 and point 0.1, switch them around, I still get the same value. So we can see which one we call point 0.2 and which one we call point 0.1 doesn't matter as long as we're consistent in which y value we subtract from which y value and which x value we subtract from which x value. So we have to be very careful in choosing the order in which we do it. But which one we label as point 0.1, point 0.2 is arbitrary. You're going to get the same result every time. So, and this is the formula that we're using. So we have to be aware of that. Commit this to memory. Change in y over change in x. Another way you might see it in textbooks is change in y over change in x. This is just a Greek letter delta. It just means change. It means finding the difference of the y values, finding the difference of the x values. But this is a formula you're actually going to use. Let's go ahead and explore slope a little bit more. We want to graph this equation, y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. And if we recall from the previous video, it is a linear equation because we have two variables to the first power. So to graph this, another thing we learned about was intercepts. So I'm going to find the y-intercept and x-intercept. If I have two points, I can then graph the line. So I'm going to find the y-intercept first. And that's essentially setting x to 0. When x is 0, we will find the y-intercept. 0 times any value is 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. y equals 1 when that x value is 0. So we found the y-intercept. Now I can graph it on here. When x is 0, y is 1. So we're right on the y-axis. Now I can find the x-intercept. Well, we know that that's when the y value is 0. So if this is set equal to y, I can take the equation, set it equal to 0, and now solve for it. I can subtract 1 from both sides of the equation using that property of equality. And then I can multiply by the reciprocal to eliminate this fraction. So I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of negative 1 half, which is negative 2 or negative 2 over 1, however you want to think about it. 
And when I simplify this, negative times a negative is positive. Half of 2 is 1. I get 1x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. Now, we don't have to write that positive in there. I just did that so that we're keeping track of the sign. x equals 2. So now I know the x-intercept. When y was 0, I solved x to be 2. So I can say, OK, well, when y is 0, x is 2. Now that I have two points, I can draw a nice straight line. I'll do my best to draw a nice straight line here. And we can see we have our linear equation graphed. Now we want to determine the slope. Well, to determine the slope, I have to know it's change in y over change in x. And we do that by finding the difference of our y points and difference of our x points. Well, in order to use slope, I need two points. Well, great news. I found the intercepts. I have two points I can use. So I'm just going to use these points. And it's really arbitrary which one I call point 1, point 2. So I'm going to just say, well, let's call this point 2 and this one point 1. And now I can find the slope of that line. So to find the changes in y's, these are x values, these are y values, I can say y2 minus y1, just like our formula says, 1 minus 0. That's going to be my change in y y2 minus y1. To find my change in x, since this is, I called this point 2, 0 minus 2, the difference in those values, 0 minus 2. This is going to be my change in x. So change in y over change in x, if we simplify it, well, 1 minus 0 is 1. And 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. And we don't want to leave that negative in a denominator, so I bring it out front. Negative 1 half. We found the slope algebraically or mathematically to be negative 1 half. Now I want to draw your attention to this value and go back to the line. The slope was negative 1 half. This value, the coefficient of x, is negative 1 half. They are the same, and that will happen every time because this actually is the slope of a line. This is the average rate of change between any two points for this particular line. All right, let's look at uh, some other properties of slope. Now, if we look at this line, we want to just assess its behavior. As we look at it from left to right in our x direction, what is the behavior as we move from left to right? Just like we read a book, we go from left to right. Well, this line is going up in the y direction as we go from left to right. So as we go in the x direction, in the positive x direction, this arrow is going in the positive y direction. Well, if we think about it in terms of slope, we have an increase in y, a positive value. It's going up. As we go to the right, a positive value in the x. A positive over a positive, the vertical change over the horizontal change, results in a positive number, a positive divided by a positive. So if we assess a slope of a line looking at a graph from left to right, if it's increasing, we would say that's a positive slope. So positive a positive slope. So it's increasing. An increasing slope is the same as a positive slope. Now if we assess a graph from left to right, and it's going down as we look left to right. Down would be negative in the y direction over positive in the x, because that's how we're looking at it from left to right in x is going to positive values. A negative over a positive, we call that a decreasing slope or a negative slope. Now, a negative slope, well, we can see that's decreasing. What does that actually mean numerically? Well, when we define slope of a line, it's either positive or negative. That coefficient in front of x will either be positive or negative. And when we see that sign, we should 
conjure up an image in our mind that, hey, this line is going to increase from left to right. So when we go to graph it, we know, oh, positive better go up left to right no matter what points I put on that graph. Or if it's negative, it'll decrease. Let's look at an example where we have four different lines on the same set of axes. Now, here I have y equals negative 1 half x. And this is the graph of that line. So this line, if we notice, as we go left to right, it's going down. It's decreasing. Well, this sign right here, that negative sign, tells me that it should decrease from left to right. Now, it's not decreasing very rapidly. It's decreasing a little bit as we go over. Well, it's decreasing at a rate of 1y for every 2x, that ratio of change. But if we look at this one here, y equals negative 2x, well, negative 2 is obviously greater than negative 1 half in an absolute value sense. 2 is bigger than 1 half. So we see because it's negative, it is a greater slope. It is decreasing that much faster than this one. As we go left to right, it decreases fa faster. So we can see that that number tells me the steepness. And the sign tells me the direction. Is it going to decrease or is it going to increase? Well, if we compare this line, y equals 2x, to y equals negative 2x, we can see this one's decreasing at a rate of 2 for every 1 in x. And we see this one's increasing at a rate of 2 for every 1 in x. So we can see that this is increasing and this one's decreasing. The only way they're different is their sign. They have the same value of slope. But one is negative, meaning it decreases. One's positive, it's increasing. So if you see a positive slope, you should identify, hey, that line better be going up from left to right. And finally, y equals 1 half x. If we look at this value and this previous value, they have the same coefficient, 1 half and 1 half. But this one's negative, so it's decreasing at this particular rate, 1 in the y for every 2 in the x. And this one's increasing. 1 in the y for every 2 in the x. So a slope of 1 half isn't going to go up as fast as a slope of 2. But it is still increasing because it's positive. So when we see these coefficients in front of x, we should be able to determine two things, whether it's increasing and decreasing, and relatively, how fast is it increasing or decreasing. Now, we're going to look at two special case lines. And the first one is a horizontal line. Now, if we try to understand this line in terms of slope, well, what is the change in y? Because change in y over change in x, a little easier than writing out the uh, equation I asked you to memorize. The change in y, well, y doesn't change. So its change is 0. Now, the change in x, well, it really depends on what two points I choose. I could choose a point here and a point here. And let's say they're just one spot away. Well, the difference in these two spots would be one value. Or I could choose this point here and maybe a point over here. Maybe that change happens to be 7. No matter what two points I, change, or I choose, the slope should be the same. And if we look at this, 0 divided by 1 is 0. 0 divided by 7 is 0. So no matter what that change in x is, the y value never changes. It's always 0. y is always some constant value. It's not going to change. So if we think about this, well, anything divided by, or 0 divided by any number is 0. So this type of line, a horizontal line, actually has a slope of 0. So its slope is 0. Could we put this into a standard form? Uh, or into a slope-intercept form, something we'll define in more detail in the next video. Well, y equals 0x, because that's my slope, the coefficient of x, and plus some b value, whatever this value is. Well, if we simplify this, well, 0 times anything is 0, y equals b. This is the equation of a line, and it is in slope-intercept form. It is in a standard form. y equals b is the equation of a horizontal line. Now let's look at the next example. What about a vertical line? Well, let's try to define a vertical line in terms of slope. Well, if I look at this as a change in y over a change in x, well, the change in y can be any value 
It just depends on what points I choose. If I choose those two ordered pairs, well, my change in y, let's say it's 1. Over, well, what is the, what's x doing? Well, x is always this value. It never changes. So the x value never changes. The change in x is 0. Well, what if I chose some other value? Maybe this value down here and this value up here. Let's say their difference or their change is 10. Well, x still doesn't change. So we can see we have a similar pattern to what we had with the horizontal line. But hopefully we see, hey, there's something wrong with this picture. Can we ever divide by 0? No. This is a line that does not have a slope. It is undefined. So if we're asked what's the slope of a vertical line, we would say undefined. So I'm just going to abbreviate UND, undefined, because we can never divide by 0. And if you think about it, it might make sense if you want to consider, consider it this way. When we talk about slope, it, it is defining the steepness of the line. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? Is it positive or is it negative? Well, if I look at this line and I asked you, is this line increasing or decreasing, you'd have to say yes, because it's increasing and decreasing. It's going up and down. It's doing both at the same time. So is it increasing or decreasing? Yes, it's doing both. And to, for something to do two things at once in opposite directions, really cannot be defined in terms of slope. It has an undefined slope. It's going up and down. It has positive and negative at the same time. So a vertical line has an undefined slope. All right, let's look at some examples. Here we have x equals a number. Now, just like we saw in that last example, x equals a number, the x value is never going to change. It will always be 3 quarters. So if I want to graph this, I've already identified it to be a vertical line. x is a value that never changes. So if I'm going to graph it, here's about 3 quarters. So I'm going to draw my line. And we can see it's parallel to the y-axis if, if my line was perfectly straight. And we have the graph of x equals 3 fourths. x never changes. We have a slope that is undefined because it's going up and down at the same time. If I want to graph the equation of a line, y equals negative 4, just by looking at this, y is a constant, y never changes, I know that this is a horizontal line. So I can graph a horizontal line. So I'm just going to go to this value. No matter what x is, y will always be negative 4. So keep an eye out on these. These can be tricky. We have to identify when x is equal to a constant value, it doesn't matter what y is. We do not see a y in this equation. So it's not dependent on y. Here, we don't see an x. So it doesn't matter what x is. It's going to be a horizontal line. y never changes. To see applications of slope and intercepts, we're actually going to explore the slope-intercept form of an equation in part two of this section 6.3 video. Thank you for watching.